Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Ah, whew. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for joining us here. We have a lot of outboard fun and other stuff on this channel, so thanks for stopping in. Um, well, it's a little bitty bit early yet, but... It's already happening. If you build it, they will come. Well, I uh, wanted to get back on the uh, hum, hum, the spirit of the outboard. But. they came. Um, the customers came. So I had some motors dropped off so I'm gonna have to put the spirit on the back burner a little bit. Um, I did get the water pump in. I got the lower unit out there. I'm gonna do a little cleaning on that and uh, paint and priming that kind of thing but uh, I'm gonna have to put the spirit Hit it on the back burner a little bit and take care of a couple little outboards for some customers. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video mostly and maybe some other things. So let's get at it. All the old mold, the old green, see it growing, busted up bonnet, um, maybe a bear, something chewed on the uh, recoil start. <laughs> What do we got? What do we got? Let's see. Not too overly bad in there. Don't look. Little rust and corrosion, but look at this. Look at this handle here. Just falling apart. This engine's been sitting. You can see 
the green mold on everything and uh, there's a creepy crawly in there I see the web Ugh. little stiff little tight been sitting we'll see if we can get her back to life now what I like to do with these guys that have been sitting like this is just take some regular old lubricant whatever brand don't matter and just hose this thing down and get it squirted all around in there one it helps loosen things up a bit two it sometimes will get them creepy crawlies and then I'll take something like this um, this carb intake cleaner and shoot it just around the bottom of the pan yep and then put the lid back on and that sometimes gasify them crawlies Put a little bit of that stinky, stinky, winky in there. And sometimes it won't be long, the more crawlers just start crawling out and dropping down on their little webs. Did I mention I'm an arachnophobia? Arachnophobe? I don't know what Iraq has to do with spiders, but I don't like them. He's a little one, but it don't take long. Can you see him right there? There he comes. There's the crawly. There's one of them. See, there's his little web. There'll be more. Well, you just ever have one of those weeks that uh, everything just seems to be broken. Everything just falls apart or breaks. been one of those kind of weeks for me. I was sitting here working on a fella's chainsaw right here. I'd be turned the other way around. You understand? Working on this little chainsaw. It was about nine o'clock at night. It was quiet in here. It was literally a blizzard outside. We got like eight inches of snow that night in a six, seven hour period. Had the door shut. It's all warm in here, cozy, just cozy, quiet. And I'm not kidding you. As I'm sitting there, you know, you know, chainsaws, teeny. I'm sitting there. Boom! I am not kidding. An explosion happened. No, I didn't blow up the man's chainsaw. My garage door. Boom! Literally exploded. A partner had me a heart attack. This door, this old garage door, door the shop door is made out of wood been here 35 years that I know of the torsion springs up there that are coiled and under super high tension run through cables if you know anything about garage doors which I very knew very little and they hook to the very bottom panel of the garage door well that bottom panel was all rotten and everything and it just well, I think I kind of know what happened is my snow plower guy who snow plows around here, he had pushed some snow this way and that way, and I think it was up against the garage door, and, and the thing was just sitting there and melting snow, water, and stuff, and it was rotten to begin with, has been for some time. And those springs with all that pressure, just that, that bottom panel just buckled, turned into kindling 
and exploded. Cables and metal parts went flying. Um, I turned around and the garage door that was shut and peaceful and quiet was now just a gaping hole, snow blowing in. Oh boy. So for that night I just hung a tarp and did what I had to did, you understood. But uh and then so I went down to, you know, you know, the folks what sell them garage doors. The garage doors Went down there seen that fella. And he said, you need a garage door. I said, yes, yeah, standard shop door, nine, nine foot sections, seven foot tall, five panel, you know, you know, standard. He says, yeah, I can get you one of them eight to 12 months from now. Mm -hmm. He said, you heard of the supply chain problems? We got people all over the state of Alaska who are boarding their garages and their shops up with plywood and stuff and tarps and because they can't get no garage door parts, brackets, springs. The supply chain. So, and the one thing that I don't have any talent in whatsoever at all. Is woodworking but had to do what it did so I went and got some plywood and some one by fours and I said it's it's a rectangular panel how hard can it be so I patched it back together and the bottom panel completely disintegrated so that the next panel up became the bottom and then the second panel from the top became the one that I built you could see it I show you. I show you. But yeah, just one of those weeks where everything is broken. I show you. I show you. ain't the way outboards are supposed to be stored. See all that snow right there? So my buddy, we had a blizzard. We got about 10 inches in two days, 10, 12 inches in two days, and he come and pushed the snow toward my outboard rack. And over they went. So I got to take care of that. Get them standing right side up. That's just another thing. One more thing. Okay. You see the distance between the top of the tire and the fender? Or the fender skirt? See that distance? Now let's look at this. <laughs> This is the other side. Look at the distance between the tire and the fender skirt on this side. Yep, the old shock mount, upper shock mount rotted away on the old Danger Ranger. And so, I gotta take care of it. I gotta take care of it. 
I can get the easy ones. Try and lift one more time. This one there. Broken lines, broken strain, broken beds with a broken spring. And broken hair, folk are sleeping in a broken bed. But I ain't jive, I sure ain't joking. Everything is broken, broken windows all over this town. Fancy cars just are breaking on.
looks a little better. I do. I'm not done yet. But getting closer. Let there be light. Okay, a little bit of a hack on these Yamaha 99 and 15 two strokers. Um, when they've been sitting a good long time, like this one has, what you want to do is you got your fuel line coming in from your quick connect out, out in the front of the motor, and it goes around to your fuel filter where it fills the sediment bowl, and then this goes to the fuel pump. This hose goes right to the fuel pump, which in this one is incorporated in this model of two-stroke with the carb itself. And what you want to do when these things have been sitting like that is get you some two-stroke oil with just a little bit, maybe like a, a half ounce of two-stroke oil with a tablespoon of gas. And fresh gas and mix that all up and then take a little nozzle of some kind in this case and pour it down this hose so it goes into this fuel fill, uh, fuel pump because the fuel pump um, has those diaphragms in there and if they've been sitting for any length of time these old Yamahas they'll pop but they won't stay running because those diaphragms in there are so stiff so mix up some, some uh, oil mostly oil with just a little tiny gas and wet that those diaphragms in there with that and then let it sit for at least an, an hour or so and that'll sometimes soften up those diaphragms and then I'm going to take this recoil start off and as I complete a fax check on this after this fuel pump's been soaking for a while in oil and so forth I'm going to spin it over real fast with my half inch Milwaukee and hopefully that'll get those diaphragms flexing and make the fuel pump work and in my case um, and you can do the same you can get this tri-flow and take your nozzle and just and then just let it drain down do that a few times and get those diaphragms um, tri-flow is nothing but a lubricant it's an oil and it has a flammable flammable component to it and it, it'll work just like two-stroke gas and all. So do that a couple times, let it drain down, and get those diaphragms lubricated good. And like I said, let them set for an hour or two. Then spin it over with a, a good electric drill to get those diaphragms moving. And hopefully that, that in of itself will uh, let it run. Okay, if you look at these top two right here, I realize we got a little bit of sunshine there, but I think you'll still be able to see it. Got some nice sparky warky there. Both cylinders. Oh, let's do some compressiones. Now this is going to be a, a, a true dry compression check. I've got no oil or anything in these cylinders, so whatever it is is what it is. So this is going to be our bottom, and it's at zero. Let's give her some. Let's give her some. Give her some. <laughs> That's some good turning over. What we get? What we get? We got about 125 on the bottom. On the bottomus of the bottomus. Yeah. There we go. Now we're on the top. We are zero. And yeah, spin her over. Mm -hmm. 
we got 125, one, about 131. 131, 132. So we got some lovely compressiones. You understand as I speak good Spanish. All right, so we got some good compression. We got some good spark. Now what I am going to do at this time, oh yeah, I forgot to show you the plugs. They actually look really good. They're nice and tan, good even burning around there. I'm going to hit them on my fine wire wheel real quick, zip, 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 just to clean them up. And then I'm going to spray some tri -flow. don't you know, in the hole. There we go. But. Oh, just a little bit of wire wheel some, and then they look like that. Don't that look better already? Then we take the tri-flow. This kind of works like a pop start, too. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put these. The plugs in this one are NGKB7HS10. And the little sticker in here, you can't see it. It says NGK B7HS10. So it has the right plugs and they look good and they look like they were firing. So, I would say at this point, I'm going to hook back up my little fuel line that I took off that goes to the fuel pump. You know, you know. So that we don't go squirting the petroleonis all over the palacionis. You understand us? So. Hmm. I mean, feeling right there. There it goes. That felt better. That felt more better. There we go. Let's get the half Milwaukee off. Put it over there. Then we'll get this recoil somewhere <laughs> with the dog chewed up handle or something. Yeah, we'll get that. And then we'll put our millimeters. Ten by Jen. Get them in there. Get this recoil back on and now that I got the recoil back on, I am going to get it in the tank, hook up the fuel, I'll be right back. Alrighty, got her in the tank. Uh, let's Shouldn't need the choke, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Just to see if it'll help get that gas up there. So, maybe right there. You'll see what I see. That was probably the tri-flow. Give it a little gas. Nothing. Well, the old carburetor. Probably gonna have to come off and we've been docking. I see it. So there's leaking too a little. What's going on there? Now, unfortunately, on this little guy, I was looking, the, uh, the carburetor's completely, the butterfly for the throttle in the back is completely froze. The one for the choke works. But this is completely froze. I, I can't hardly move it at all. Um, is a little weird but I've seen a, so it would this carburetor is gonna have to be taken off put in the ultrasonic cleaner here's another little hack um, if you want to run one of these with just tri flow to see if it'll start going I put a couple little quarter inch sockets as spacers here and here to use um, 
once the air silence are off, is off, these bolts are too long that hold the carb on because they stab through the air silencer, then the carb, then into the intake. So um, just put a little quarter inch socket like that and then they'll fit just fine. Um, but that's froze up. I can get it to run on tri-flow. But another interesting thing I found, um, it won't shift. It won't shift out of gear or out of neutral. It, it's just stuck. You know, normally you can pull, pull it over and, and get them to move, but not this guy. It's going to break that well-bleached handle there, I think. So it's stuck in neutral, so something's going on in the lower. And uh, I could pop that carb off and start cleaning and drop that lower. Oh yeah, don't pee either. Uh, at least not on the tri-flow. Now this tri-flow has oil mixed in with it, so it's going to be alright to do that. I can't really open the throat of the throttle too much. Um, but anyway, let's see. Let me get a new can. This one's about out. I'm going to need a new gun. And it'll spray better without that thing. There we go. So let's see if I can get her to go again. But I couldn't get her to pee, so well. That impeller's probably shot looking at everything else on here. So, see if I can get her to go with. Almost. Whoa! Oh, let's turn the idle down. It's hard to do left hand. <laughs> That's the other thing the transom clamps are froze. So, this guy's been sitting for a long time. Long time. Yeah, I don't even know if I can. Get her going with the old tri flow. I'm gonna start choking it. Yeah, it tried to go that time. If I can do a left hand spray. If I quit spraying, I can't even spray it. Yep. Might have put too much of that in there. But, move your key. If I can get this thing to, are you in there? Can't even see. There you in there. Because of the amount of repair this little salty bugger's gonna need, I'm gonna have to call the owner and see what he wants to do. Okay, like I said, uh, I'm gonna have to call the owner on this guy because mm, this one's gonna be one of those that's right there. Is it going to be cost effective to repair it? Because I don't know what's wrong with that lower unit. So before I drop the lower unit, I'm going to ask him if he wants to pay me 
at least a half hour labor to drop that lower unit and give him my best guess whether it's the lower unit or maybe something in the shift behind the carburetor which has to come off has to be clean so you're looking at three maybe four uh, hours labor top to bottom you're looking at impeller water pump you're looking at maybe a carb kit maybe some carb gaskets definitely fuel pump diaphragm kit uh, and you say why why so long on the labor well because the transom clamps are froze what else am I going to run into on this thing that won't budge the throttle butterfly in the throat of the carburetor completely seized up yes I can put it under heat in my ultrasonic cleaner and I can sit there and work it and get it going that takes time and uh, time money show sure is so I'll call him and say here here's my you know what do you want to do and let me show you the bottom of this this propeller here's why here's what scares me I guess here's here's why I will show you show you Let's unhook the old connector because it ain't doing no good sitting there. I show you, I show you. Kind of raised you up too much, didn't I? Let's, let's look at this propeller. Yeah. Let me get you more of a straight angle so you can see it. There you go. See this propeller? It's all chewed up. All bent. Um, that's what scares me. And like I said, I, I can spin this, but I can't get it to go in here. Neutral. It, it won't come out of neutral. So is that, is it the shift rod? Uh, who knows? So I'm going to need to make a phone call. Because this little guy definitely has been abused. It's been abused. So, I will call him, get his uh, permission to proceed or see what he wants to do, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So, this one's probably getting a little bit long, and I want to thank you for watching the video and stopping in. And uh, so, as always, that is... One more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids and hacks are coming on Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass.